I've laid out the truth about the conflict between Asians and Africans, but before I tell you what we're going to do about it, let me show you some more examples of how much your Asian friends like you. This is an ad for KFC in Korea. Now, you got a Korean guy captured by some Africans. You already know what comes next. Chicken soothes the savage beasts. The Koreans are so proud of this ad that they won't run it outside of Korea. And, of course, most black people have never seen it. Now, what are you going to do about it? Let's talk about art, shall we? We'll start with music, the universal language. In this case, what it's saying is, we don't respect black people. This is a Jap who's doing an Al Jolson routine, mocking Louis Armstrong. So Here's another one from Korea this time. Now, what are you going to do about it? Here's a Korean named Nikki S. Lee. She's a photographer who's done a series of pictures about her misadventures trying to fit into the hip-hop scene. She decided to paint herself brown and claim she was just doing it so she could get into the mood. So, what do you think? A harmless case of a clueless but otherwise well-meaning Asian who simply wanted to slip into someone else's skin? Or just another yellow bastard who's using a pathetic excuse to keep from getting her made in Taiwan ass kicked? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? This group is known as the Bubble Sisters. They're a Korean group who decided they would use blackface as their gimmick. But wait until you hear the reason why, and you're going to love this. According to them, they were told that they weren't pretty enough to be a professional singing group. So instead, they would need a gimmick if they wanted to get people to buy their albums. Well, they decided that the perfect gimmick would be to play on the ugly theme, that they were too ugly to be professionals. So this is their gimmick, that they're ugly and proud of it. Now, you already know what the racial inference here is. But the question is, what are you going to do about it? The Asians will try to tell you that these things aren't really racist at all. No, that's just your black imagination running away with you again. This is about admiration for black music, not ridicule. What are you going to do about it? And of course, the whites are trying to revive blackface. What's that? Uh, well, I thought it over, and I believe if our number would go a little better than blackface. Oh, I thought we were going to do it like this. Well, that's before, uh, before I thought it over. Oh, for a month and a half I've been dreaming how pretty I was going to look tonight. Well, here's my punishment for thinking so well of myself. February morn, a tiny baby boy was born, Abraham. And that is why we celebrate the blessed February day, Abraham, Abraham. Tell me. Gave this land the finest sun. That's what she did. Whoever went to Washington. Who died? Abraham.
It started innocently enough, now didn't it? Angelina does brown face to play the widow of a dead journalist. Blacks opposed it, but because she went light on the make, the media gave this outrage no airplay. Then we had Saturday Night Live's Paul Armisen, who, by the way, is half Asian, half white, doing brown face of Obama. Well, black people weren't laughing. Rather than admit that it was racist, he instead tried to chalk it up to Obama mania. Because after all, if a white person or an Asian merely denies their behavior is racist, then that means it's not racist. And who can forget Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder? You know, when I had heard that Terrence Howard was fired from Iron Man 2, for a while there I thought old Downey Jr. would be replacing him. Now, what do all these racists have in common? They claim that they're doing it merely as an homage, that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Say, you want to guess how many of these admirers of black people would welcome a black family into their neighborhood? We've been down this road before, from the founding of America. Every biggest excuse is that it's not my fault, it's society's fault. Nobody takes responsibility for anything. The catch-all excuse is that so-and-so was a product of his time. They've been saying that in the U.S. for over 230 years. Thomas Jefferson had slaves? Well, it's because he was a product of the colonial age. President Lincoln said he would see the superior position assigned to the white man? Well, it's because he was a product of the slavery era. George Wallace tries to bring back slavery? Well, it's because he was a product of the unreconstructed South. George Bush leaves thousands to die in New Orleans? Well, it's because he was a product of the Dixiecrat South. White people, spanning four centuries, all the way to the present, and all of them just products of their time. Gee, about the only thing this constant litany of excuse-making proves is that after 230 years, the times haven't changed one bit.